بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد Father of the Prophets, one of the five greatest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim in English, Abraham. And he is the second most beloved creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the jinn and the ins. The Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam was born at a time when there were no believers in Allah. Idolatry had spread across all of humanity. He is Ibrahim, the son of Azar. Ibrahim was born in Babylon, Babel in Iraq. Allah places him in the household of one of the worst people in the entire city of Babylon. He is born in the household of the idol maker, whose name is Azar. Father of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Azar, basically he was an idol worshipper. Not only was he an idol worshipper, he was in business with the idols as well. Grew up in an environment where he sees his father early in the morning, goes and makes different idols and statues for people to come and worship. Ibrahim alayhi salam rejected that concept from a young age. And that's why Ibrahim, when his father used to send him out to sell the idols, it's been narrated that he used to go past the river and he used to drown the idols, put them in the river and say, save yourself. Swim, you're drowning, do something. You can't even save yourself, how are you going to save me? And he challenged his own father in the most polite of manners as the Quran tells us, Ya Abati, oh my dear father, how can you worship this idol? Oh my dear father, what, why would you worship that which can neither hear nor see? Oh my dear father, this is a rock and a stone. It cannot benefit you and harm you. Why do you not turn to the creator of all? Oh my father, verily there has come to me of knowledge that which came not unto you. So follow me, I will guide you to a straight path. Oh my respectable dear father, honorable father, my dear father, don't listen to, don't worship shaitan. Shaitan is surely disobedient to the most merciful. I am afraid if you carry on like this, then even the most merciful won't have mercy upon you and he'll punish you. But sadly his father responds back in a very harsh manner. He says, Oh Ibrahim, do you have no desire for my gods? He says, if you don't stop, then I will definitely stone you. I will kill you by stoning you. What was the response of Ibrahim alayhi salam? He said, Peace be unto you. I will ask Allah to forgive you. He is unto me our most gracious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And Ibrahim's invoking of Allah for his father's forgiveness was only because of a promise he Ibrahim made to his father. But when it became clear to him that he is an enemy of Allah, he disassociated himself from him. Ibrahim made da'wah to his people also. So he asks them a question. Do they hear you when you're calling out to them? Can they benefit you in any way or can they harm you in any way? They neither said yes, nor did they say no. They kept quiet, but they answered him in a different way. What did they say? They said, we found our forefathers worshipping them. He would say to the people who was going to buy from me that which cannot harm nor benefit. At that young age, he used to say that, Ibrahim. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam makes mention of even more questions. He says, you see these things that you people are worshipping, you and your forefathers that you have been worshipping all along, all of these things that you've been worshipping for so many years, they are all, including yourselves, enemies of mine. There is only one that I worship and that is Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of all the worlds, the Creator, whoever made everything here, that is whom I worship. The one who created me, so he will guide me. And the one who feeds me and provides me with the drink. And if I became ill, he is the one who cures me. The one who will make me die and the one who will give me life. This is the God that I worship. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave him the guidance at a very young age. When he started questioning, some narrations say his age was only seven. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam said silently to himself. He was speaking to himself. By Allah, I shall plot a plan to destroy your idols. 
after you have gone away and turn your backs these people they had a day in which they would go out of the town and they would celebrate so they came to ibrahim alayhi salam and told him come on let's go he said i am ill he was in physically ill but he meant is that i am sick of what you are doing they understood that he means that he is physically ill so they allowed him to stay so they left him alone thinking that he is ill and they all went out of town and ibrahim alayhi salam as salam is alone so what he then does is that he makes his way towards the temple all alone young boy with an axe in his hand he goes to the temple and he also takes some food and he takes some water he goes right in front of the idols and he says to the, to idol number 1 he says hey hey here eat eat so when he doesn't eat and doesn't drink he takes his axe and wah and he smashes all of the idols and while he's doing so he's asking the idols why can't you defend yourself and he smashes all of the idols except for one he leaves the biggest idol standing and then he hangs the axe on the shoulder of this idol and the people they come running back and they were shocked to see the idols being destroyed and demolished what happened to our lord being destroyed so they start to ask around who committed such an evil crime who had the guts who had the encouragement to do such a bad crime like this our lord was being destroyed so one of them said there is no one else except that young man that we used to always hear him speak bad about our idols it's ibrahim that young man at the time ibrahim alayhi salam was only 16 years old and he took on the whole nation single handedly so allah says ibrahim was a man one man but he was equivalent to a whole nation what a young man 16 years old so they said bring him here right now in front of everybody and we're going to question him So they brought Ibrahim alayhi salam in front of Ephron. And they told him, Oh Ibrahim, Oh Ibrahim, are you the one that did this to our lords? So Ibrahim alayhi salam with full wisdom and smartness. And look at the intellect of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He says, Why don't you ask them? This is the biggest one of them. This is the most able of them. This is the greatest of them. Ask him, he will tell you what happened. He's got the ax. in his hands he probably the one that did it these people as soon as they hear this response from this child they come back and they look at the idol and then they look at ibrahim alayhi salam and then they look at the idol and then they look at ibrahim alayhi salam they say ibrahim what are you saying are you making fun of us you know that don't speak and you know that don't hear and you know that you know that don't listen so ibrahim said i'm making fun of you or you making fun of yourself He just said that then he that then listen that then see that then respond then what do you worship them for Subhanallah he wanted to make this point then he says Ibrahim says then do you worship instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which does not benefit you or does not harm you Ibrahim alayhi salam woke them up this was a shock to them so for a moment they woke up and realize their insanity and their mistake and their foolishness so they started to think about their position but then shaitan came in with his influence and his whispers so he made them override that thought and they went back to their ignorance again and i said this man this young man had committed a severe crime and he must pay a severe punishment for it so one of them said make a fire and burn him burn him and support your gods if you are going to do something or well, all of those people combined they gather the firewood and they build an enormous fire ikhwani and they set fire to it and the flames were so high that it would a bird would fly over it and fall down dead they have to build a catapult to throw to launch ibrahim alayhi salam into the fire because it's not possible to get close enough to it because this fire is so big so they build a catapult <coughs> they then got ibrahim alayhi salam he was all tied up in ropes and chains and they put him into a catapult and they released the catapult and ibrahim alayhi salam is airborne and he's flying towards the fire and he's going very fast and right there something amazing happens the mufassirin said at that moment 
Time stopped. Ibrahim is in the middle of the air. Angel Jibreel appears before him. Says, Ibrahim, Allah and his angels are with you. Anything you like, ask me and I'll, I'll make it happen for you. Do you need any help? And look at the level of Iman of this child. He says, Allah knows my situation. I don't need to ask you for anything. Go ahead, you know, leave me alone. Allah knows. Jibreel alayhi salam says, are you sure? He says, yes. This is the heart of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So attached with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even in a moment, ask help from anyone and anything. Jibreel will come to him and say to Ibrahim in that moment that Ibrahim has no one except Allah who say to him, oh Ibrahim, do you need help? He says, from you, no, but from Allah, yes. And then he says, Hasbun Allah wa na'mal wakil. Hasbun Allah wa na'mal wakil. Allah is enough for me. And he is the best disposer of affairs. Ibrahim alayhi salam landed in the fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the fire. Because the fire is a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O oh fire, be coolness and safety for Ibrahim. So immediately, if someone is tied up with, with chains and ropes, for the fire to be a means of peace, it had to burn the ropes and chains. So now he was released. And as he's released, he goes in there and he felt so comfortable. Later on, he makes mention in his life that the best time that I've ever spent during my lifetime was that time that I was in the fire. And then he walks out of that fire very calmly. As he walks out, they're just shocked looking at him. They don't know. So one young man gets up and he decides, I want to follow you. You are right. These people are wrong. Allahu Akbar, young man, who was this young man? His nephew, Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet Lut, he was not yet a prophet, he was a young, young boy. After this event happened, the king of Babylon at that time was a Nimrud. So Nimrud heard about this young man who performed this miracle. Who is he? Bring him forward. So they brought Ibrahim alayhi salam, this young man, to debate with the king and Nimrud the powerful dictator, tyrant and Nimrud. There were people who used to worship this king. He used to call himself a god. So the king says, who is the one you worship, O Ibrahim? Ibrahim alayhi salam says, my god is the one who gives life and death. Can you do that? Nimrud said, yes, I can give life and I can take it away. How? He said, call two people from jail. So they brought these two men from jail. He commanded his soldiers to execute one of them. And he told the second one, you are free. He said, see, I took away the life of this one and I gave life to the other one. Ibrahim salam didn't mean this foolish, a shallow meaning of giving life and death. Ibrahim salam was talking about the miracle of life, which is occurring in every single moment of the day and night. Ibrahim salam did not respond to this. Ibrahim salam completely changed the subject. And since he saw that this man is stubborn and he is going to debate and dialogue with this way and argue in this fashion, I am going to get him from another angle. Then Ibrahim salam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the sun from the east, bring it from the west. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so the disbeliever was utterly defeated. He couldn't speak. He was defeated completely. Imagine a, a young man. Shab telling a king without fear. Why? Because he had a qalbun salim. He had a clean heart, solid. He knew nothing can harm me besides Allah. And remember when Ibrahim said, السلام, My Lord, show me how you give life to the dead. He, Allah said, Do you not believe? He, Ibrahim said, Yes, I believe. But to be stronger in my faith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Ibrahim السلام, to grab four birds and to slaughter those four birds and after being slaughtered to chop them into pieces and mix all the pieces together and put all the different pieces onto different mountains then when you're standing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then call them and see what happens they will come flying back to you Allahu Akbar so he did that and then he called the birds and he started watching these birds amazing when he started watching these birds, they flew back to him when he called. And then 
Allahu Akbar, Allah says, and you should know that Allah is all powerful, all wise. This is a young boy, his Iman in Allah has now been strengthened, one after the other. Nobody believed in him except his nephew Lut and they had to leave. They had to flee from the persecution and the oppression of their homeland. They had to give up the land of their birth and the land they were raised up and go and find another land to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and we rescued him and Lut to the land which we have blessed for the mankind, for the world. And the blessed land is the holy land, Asha. On the way, he passed through a land called Harran in Asha. Inshallah, we will see what happens in Harran. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك